So, you want to reverse engineer something. Well, this is not going to be an easy task, because traditionally, you would need to get a lot of precise measurements and tolerance to correctly replicate it in CAD. So, for simple objects like this, a square block, it's going to be pretty easy to do it. But what if you want to do something more interesting, more fun, like a fender of a unicycle part? Well, traditionally, you need to use a lot of tools to get the measurements right. For example, you need to use calibers, micrometers, ruler, and protectors. If you have a smaller item, like less than 5 centimeters, you will even need to use a CMM machine with a touch probe and probe them numerous times to get the correct measurements. That's why we use 3D scanners, specifically structured light 3D scanners. Why? Because when it comes down to precision, nothing beats structured lights. This is done by projecting a series of light patterns onto the objects, and the way these objects reflect the light patterns will be captured by the camera on the scanners, and this will allow us to create very accurate 3D scanned models. For example, our entry model, the S1, would give us an accuracy of 35 microns. To give you some perspective, this is one tenth, less than one tenth of a millimeter. So, if you are an engineer or artist where all the tiniest details makes the biggest difference, then a structure like 3D scanner like the S1 would be the perfect choice for you. This is pretty much all the information you need. Now, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step tutorial into using our S1 to scan the objects, and then we're going to port it to SolidWorks to do some reverse engineering and sketching. And lastly, we're going to prototype it using 3D printer. So let's go. Quick pause. If you're interested in 3D scanning, make sure to visit us at polygon.com. We have a learning hub there and all the resources to get you the best 3D scanning results. And if you're interested in our products, email us at sales at polygon.com and call 604-293-1767. We will spec out the best model that best fit your use case. Let's get back to the video. So for today's video, we're going to use the S1 3D scanner and a rotary table. Simply place the S1 on the tripod, place it on the tripod, and place the objects on the rotary table. I want to position the object to be in front of a 3D scanner, and we're going to move this entire setup to the PC, and I'm going to show you how to connect it to your computer and get a correct field of view on 3D scanning. So after you turn on the scanners and connect it to the computer, the first step is open up FlexScan 3D as seen earlier and we're going to connect the scanner to FlexScan. To do this, just click scanners, click new and select compact carbon. Since we're using the S1 model, click here and click OK. Now that you can see the status is connected, we can go to project section and we can start a new project. We can name this fender, press OK. Now we have set up our equipment, let's set up our objects for scanning. For your information, our scanners do structure like technology, so it is working off by capturing the reflection of light onto the object itself. In this case, black color does not reflect light, so we have to apply scan spray to make sure data is being captured. So now we're outside, we're gonna start spraying our objects. To do this, give it a few shakes, just like you're applying to spray paint you want to apply a thin layer on the object itself. As you see, when I'm applying the scan spray, it's working very evenly. And you can see the object is turning into a whiter shade. This will allow us to capture data a lot more clearly with our 3D scanner. It'll take approximately five minutes to dry up. Be patient with this process right here. Make sure to not apply too much in one area because you don't want to get a clump of 3D scanning spray in certain sections. Apply evenly to get an accurate result. Now we have finished applying the scan spray. As you see in this object right here, the white is very evenly distributed. There's not a lot of black color. And this is how you know an object is ready for scanning. 
So now the scanner is connected, we're going to configure the scanner to scan the objects properly. As you see on the right side, there's the viewfinder showing what we can see with the cameras on the 3D scanner. We're going to switch to focus because this will give us an idea of how well aligned the object is. As you see on the objects, if I move the camera too close, the markers becomes more blurry, and if I move it too far away, it becomes blurry again. So what we want to do is to align them perfectly so that it is not blurry at all. So we have a pretty good indication on the markers and we're going to move to the face sec of the pattern. What this do is that it gives us an understanding of how correctly exposed the object is at when we're scanning the object. As you see right here, the object is pretty well lit. There is no blue or red color indicating there is over or under exposure. For example, if I move this up to 20, the red part indicates there is an overexposure and it's not going to capture the objects correctly. If I move it down to 10, you can see there's a bit of blue color and that means there is underexposure. We'll set exposure to 14 and this will be decent, pretty good for our scanning. Now we're going to run a test scan to see how well captured the objects is. As you see right here, there's a bit of background information, so we're going to cut that out. To do that, we're going to click scan, go to scanning volume, and we're going to run a test scan to find that background section we want to delete. Let's set a cut plane right here. Set cut plane, go back to scan, and make sure you have ignore preset cut planes unchecked because the reason why we set it and doesn't generate, doesn't delete the background is because we had this checked earlier. So now we have selected, unselected, ignore preset cut planes. We can capture the object pretty clearly. Now that this is done, we're going to calibrate the rotary table. Just click rotary on the left side and click geometry align. What this do is it's going to align, it's going to rotate the object and analyze the geometry of it to properly calibrate it together. If you have a really complicated object, this feature, Geometry Align, will really excel. But if you have a more simple object, such as a sphere or a square, the geometry feature might become very difficult to align, and this is where we recommend using a calibration board to do the job. So now we're saying that rotary table calibration is successful. Let's give this a try. We're going to select eight scan for the objects per scan. We're going to click scan, and see where this takes us. As you see, the object's rotating as we scan along the objects to capture this geometry features. The computer is going to utilize the alignment calibration we just did to align the object properly afterwards. So this would give us a pretty clear representation of what the object is like, and you're not going to fiddle too much around with the scanner and the placement of it to get a good capture. So great, as you see right here, most of the object is captured clearly. As you see, there's still that bit of information we need to capture the outer face of the bottom part. But I say this has done an excellent job in capturing the geometry feature of this object. So here's the finished sample of the 3D scan. Our S1 scanner is able to capture the details really well. Now that we're finished capturing, let's move on to reverse engineering it. We're going to use Extract 3D, our mesh processing software plugin in SolidWorks. And to give you a bit more details, we're going to slice the object out, analyze its cross-section data, and then sketch it out in SOLIDWORKS. If you want to learn more information about Extract 3D, you can visit our website or watch this Extract 3D tutorial on YouTube right here. As you see right here, the model is done. We have made a SOLIDWORKS model based on the imported mesh. And as you see, we can get a really high similarity behind the mesh model and the solid model itself. So with this accuracy in mind, we can run different analysis such as FDA or CFD, depending on the application. And after finishing this, we can go ahead and 3D print it. In fact, I'm feeling a bit cheeky here and make this new stand that has a kickstand available for the unicycle. So uh, it'll be exciting to see how this turns out in the printed file. And uh, yeah, I will see you when I get this part 3d printed okay as you see this is the finished product that is 3d printed i think it has a pretty good resemblance of the file itself this is a 2 to 1 scale because um, we actually ran out of some materials but 
think end product looks pretty good. You can see the details being replicated with the fender grille right here. And then you can see some details with the mounting brackets. You can see the mounting stand base plate with the honeycomb structure. So this will stand like that, allowing the unicycle to lean sideways. But yeah, I think end up results looks pretty good. And I hope you enjoy walking through this process of reverse engineering. Thanks for watching our video. And I hope you have learned to become a better engineer. Now, if you want to learn more about 3D scanning tips and tricks, make sure to visit us at polyga.com, link in the description below. And if you want to see how our products can help you and your business grow, make sure to email us at sales at polyga.com or call 604-293-1767. Our sales team will spec out the best 3D scanner that best fit your use case. I'll see you on the next video.